gang members urinating on the grave of a rival gang member may have triggered a retaliatory shooting that killed a 20-year-old man in April 2016, a Topeka police detective testified Monday. Following the court hearing, the mother of the deceased disputed the account, saying her son was cremated and has no grave. Topeka Police Detective Jesse Shearer testified during a pre-trial hearing of Christopher Sean Patillo, 18, of Topeka, who is one of two men charged with the shooting death of Brian Wade Miller on April 8, 2016, in the 2000 block of Asiaco Ridge. Patillo, who was 16 when the victim was killed, is charged with two alternative counts of first-degree murder, an alternative count of involuntary manslaughter, criminal discharge of a firearm, aggravated assault, and aggravated endangering of a child younger than 18. Shearer testified about the gang link to the shooting of Miller. The grave may have been that of Giovanni Placchio, who was fatally wounded on November 8, 2012, and died two days later. Angela Placchio, the victim's mother, disputed in the detective's testimony. She provided a copy of Giovanni Placchio's certificate of death from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, showing he had been cremated. Placchio was a member of the Dre 57, a Crips gang, Shearer said, and Brian Miller was a member of the Fifth Block, a Bloods gang. Three men were firing guns at Giovanni Placchio, 19, as he and two other people rode in a car through a neighborhood at SC 7th and Locust in 2012, according to a law enforcement affidavit obtained by the Topeka Capital Journal. The Millers knew Patillo, and the parties were in rival gangs, Shearer testified. Shortly before Miller was shot, Patillo, then 16, had been released from custody in another case. After the U.S. Marshals Service took Patillo into custody in Wichita, Shearer and Detective Jason Deutsch drove there on June 12 to interview him at the police station. On the day of Miller's death, Patillo and several other people had ridden in a car to an apartment to retrieve a gun to use in the shooting, Shearer said in court. An unidentified person or people entered the apartment to get the gun. On the videotaped interview of Patillo, Shearer told the teen the gun came from an apartment in the Ripley Park area. Over and over and over, Patillo denied knowing who went into the apartment to get the gun. I don't know, Patillo told detectives. It could have been anyone. Patillo said he didn't shoot Miller, didn't say there they are when Miller and others were spotted, and didn't drive the car. I didn't do nothing, Patillo told detectives on the videotape. In the slaying of Miller, earlier witnesses said Martinez was firing from window of a vehicle driven by Patillo. Shearer testified during what is called a Jackson v. Dano hearing in which a judge rules whether a defendant's statements to law enforcement officers were voluntary and whether the statements are admissible as evidence in the defendant's trial. District Court Judge Mark Braun didn't rule Monday whether Patillo's statements to police were admissible. Patillo is to be tried starting July 10. Co-defendant Angelo Miguel Martinez, 20, of Topeka, is to be tried starting on July 31. Martinez is charged with alternative counts of first-degree murder, criminal discharge of a firearm, aggravated assault and aggravated endangering of a child younger than 18. In an earlier hearing, a witness testified he was repeatedly told that Miller's death stemmed from a shoulder bump at the mall the day before the shooting, and the beef was between Patillo and Blake Miller, the shooting victim's brother. On another occasion, Patillo earlier testified that during the mall incident a day earlier, Blake Miller had said something to him and others as they were leaving. If you're going to say something, say it to our faces, not when we walk